Well, good old COVID-19. Uh, so I thought I'd do a bit of uh, outside work this afternoon and take the opportunity to go around the old cruiser like I said I would. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll just do a, a bit of a quick brief walkthrough and then I think over the next, I don't know, next few videos I might just post a bit of info around and different things I've used and why and uh, what I've learnt. Uh, some pitfalls, uh, yeah, things not to do, uh, such as uh, hitting the thread on a bolt, on a on a on a ball joint uh, bolt, and uh, and then having to wire everything together and drive it like 10 kilometres an hour, a few kilometres to actually drive it to a mechanic to hopefully get something undone, um, or um, and admittedly it wasn't my fault, but uh, also um, what to do if you can't bleed your brakes. <laughs> uh, so I had a, a scenario where the one of the brake lines had actually collapsed. Um, obviously it's a 32 year old truck, um, but one of the brake lines had collapsed. So I went on the process of removing and swapping it out and we actually had to swap two out. Um, and they were obviously not an off the shelf item, so they had to be custom made. Uh, and then, uh, in, during that process as well, obviously then tried to bleed the, bleed the brakes again and the brakes wouldn't bleed because one of them had seized. So, um, yeah, you live and learn. So a couple of new sets of brake calipers as well along the way. So effectively really only what's left on the old girl uh, at the moment that hasn't been either replaced with as good or better is the, uh, is the engine and transmission and both of those are going terrifically well but I'll get into those and talk about those as I walk around. All right, so we'll give it a go. So the uh, the old 60, she uh, I was actually with my grandpa the day he picked it up uh, in 1988. We uh, drove to Werribee Toyota and um, yeah, he drove it away. It obviously had it on order. Um, it's a pretty cool old truck actually. For those that don't know, um, these trucks had things like uh, sunroofs. Um, they had center consoles, actually an ice maker. Um, and the really cool thing about uh, the front of this Land Cruiser is obviously it's, uh, well, one, my pars, two, I grew up in it, and uh, three, it's basically original. So the uh, Lammies, or the seat covers, just get a Lammy, lovely Australian term. Um, the Lammy's been on it since new, so I actually haven't taken them off. Um, I'm sure this probably isn't the first set that, uh, that ever went on this truck, but uh, they certainly are on it. And I quite like them, so I'm gonna leave them. And if I have to buy another set, I'll buy another set. So, yeah. There are quite a few other sort of, like I'd end up having to add a few gauges. Um, and they are, it's just mounted in a piece of timber because I am actually, I am in the process of making a centre console for the old girl. But uh, just to help me understand how the old girl's actually running. So I wasn't sure how much boost uh, she's putting out. Um, obviously, she's a turbo diesel. Um, but there's I'm probably uh, losing power by running the 32-year-old uh, boost. It's probably actually using the power that it creates. You know, it's sort of running it around 6 PSI max boost. So... Um, that's obviously not quite good enough, but with a, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but with a 469,946 on the clock, um, we might take it a bit easy on this engine, or at least until she gets rebuilt. So the plan is to have this engine and transmission, which is an auto, so it's a three-speed or four-speed auto, um, rebuilt um, before the time we hit 500,000 Ks. At the rate I'm going, it uh, may not actually take that long to get there. So I think 500,000 Ks for an original 12 HT with an automatic transmission, um, considering it spent a fair bit of its time towing caravans, is a pretty good result. So Ice Maker Centre Console, uh, it doesn't work. So it doesn't actually even power up at the moment. So I'm not really sure. Um, I can't really isolate this problem. So it may actually be an auto electrician job or the other alternative is to pull it out and put another fridge in there, but I 
quite I'd quite like to make this one run and from all reports you know you can sort of produce ice in 30 minutes um, so right now I'm just using it is the uh, dunny roll holder amongst other things binoculars and a few other bits and pieces video tempestat so this is a really old school version of a cruise control so it basically grabs hold of the um, it doesn't actually measure any speed so it's like not actually set to a speed it's actually set to the engine rpm so uh, I actually uh, disengaged it because uh, I'm not overly sure how safe it may or may not be but um, yeah anyway original stereo um, how good it uh, does make a bit of noise We've got a few more speakers than most old land cruisers do have I'm sort of what am I counted six got six speakers <laughs> but uh, most of those are the uh, the paper you know the old cardboard style ones and uh, the very one of the very back ones is actually that brittle that uh, it's vibrated itself to pieces so I actually drive around with the uh, good old Yui boom <laughs> uh, and I that's how I get my tunes at the moment but uh, we'll certainly fix the stereo at some point um, but obviously I don't really want to play with the appearance of the old school dash so it's going to be part of the console so there'll actually be a second stereo in the truck that you won't actually see so and I'm intending on having that one with a CarPlay function so it'll be a little bit new meets old east meets west however you want to think about it and uh, go from there but uh, all very cool um, in the glove box got the original uh, what have I got in there the original warranty the service book and the owner's manual among other bits and pieces um, which is super cool uh, I think Nanny she's still uh, alive and going well she's actually got the original uh, receipt for the vehicle obviously she used to sit there a lot um, she's still got the original receipt so she actually found that for me the other day so when I go down to New South Wales I'll uh, go and see them obviously the back back seat I should say the yeah, most important bit the footy we might actually move it it looks a bit messy but uh, flawless interior um, I, have, I took the headrest off and the reason I took the headrest off is because I'm using behind the seat and we'll get into that in a minute behind the seats uh, and under the seat is storage um, it actually has a remarkable amount of room these old trucks the drives of bones hanging down but um, particular uh, special thing about these cars is actually had a rear air con so that's actually its own separate compressor um, so it runs its own cooling function which is just ultra cool so here's the uh, 12 HT so arguably one of the best engines Toyota River produced so it depends what sort of car you drive as to what <laughs> as to what is the best but uh, this is a factory turbo diesel um, it's an oil cooled diesel uh, turbo as well um, there's a turbo down there there was a bit of an oil leak there but I've, I've managed to fix that so it's probably just a bit of blow by oil but it uh, yeah, as I said, the turbo probably needs to be rebuilt. Actually, well, the entire engine needs a good going over. Uh, I did replace all the belts and I've replaced, obviously, serviced the truck. It's due for another one. I'm going to do it, even, do it every 5,000 Ks. It does use a bit of oil. It actually has an oil leak on both sides of the engine as well, which is really frustrating, but um, we'll get there. You know, I think they're only minor. So, we'll, uh, that weird-looking box towards the back there that's the cruise control unit so you can see there's plenty of room in under here uh, this nice new orange wiring so obviously I, I did the uh, did a bit of an upgrade so obviously it's a constant voltage um, constant voltage uh, alternator so the I don't need any really super smart battery management systems or whatever it might be so I just end up with a I remember the projector uh, VSR, it's only a 100 amp VSR, a voltage sensitive relay. So you can currently see the red lights on because I've been here for a little while, so it's probably feeding a bit of current either forward or back. But um, so it manages the battery that's mounted in the back of the truck. Um, I chose this is a second lot, <laughs> I used one lot of wire and I've ended up so when I say wire, electrical cable. Um, I've actually just recently 
uh, upgraded it all to, it's actually a welding cable. Um, and that was just off some stuff that I saw on YouTube. So I ended up with, I originally started with this one here. This one's actually running off to the compressor. Um, but uh, I actually had, that was my um, battery cable. And it's a fair way. Um, so in order to eliminate voltage drop, not that I got much, but there was a bit of voltage drop there. I just moved to the heavier duty cable because um, you really can't over engineer that stuff. So uh, that has really helped with the charge that I'm getting from the uh, uh, VSR, so the relay. So that's the truck uh, that's under the bonnet. I really didn't do too much. I have sort of given it a light clean, but this is how it came. You know? <laughs> uh, it's a very, very tidy old truck. Um, Dad was, for the most part, the mechanic. Uh, obviously, Pa was the uh, driver. Um, and then for, for the last, obviously, uh, Pa died on the 26th of February 2018, and Dad died a week later on the 3rd of March. So, unfortunately, I didn't really get to ask him any questions about why things are a certain way. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's been sitting in a garage for quite a while, and I'd been too scared to drive it. So, um, yeah, this is the old cruiser. Nice to get a new bonnet lining, but uh, I'll do another vid about some of the things that I'd like to do to the new engine, or this engine once it's rebuilt. So, um, but the bonnet and the wood lining on this particular bonnet and wood lining will stay the way it is. Um, I'm gonna have to modify a bonnet um, to put a 76, 70, yeah, 76 series uh, in, or in a cooler intake on the next bonnet, so we'll go from there. Wheels and tyres, um, I actually ended up getting them through Bridgestone, but I actually, like the boys at Bridgestone, they actually really helped me out, so <laughs> a lot. So they're the mechanic that I like to take my car to when I actually break things. Um, they're super helpful, um, more than happy to show you things. And I think that's a big thing around when you, you're not actually, not, when you don't really know what you're doing per se. Um, I'll add a heap of links to some videos as, as I sort of go through when I talk about the different things that I've rebuilt, fixed, replaced, whatever it might be. But uh, yeah, the links to the actual videos. But one thing about YouTube, don't just watch one video, watch like three or four or five or as many as you can find on the thing that you're really looking to um, learn to do. Because you'll see a bunch of different videos on the same thing People use different tools, blah, blah, blah. Now, a lot of the time, you can find some really good helpful ones that are just using the tools that you may have laying around. And I think, you know, when you start to look at the cost of a lot of these things, you might, you know, looking at this truck, you wouldn't think that I've poured a whole lot of money into it so far because it really hasn't had any engine mods. And I actually haven't done the sums and I might actually work that out. But, you know, we'd be looking at, oh, there's 3,000 for the suspension. Two and a half for the wheels and tyres. Those uh, brakes for a couple. We had fifteen hundred by the time we did everything. Uh, I actually work it out. I work it out. But yeah, there'd be at least ten thousand dollars worth of stuff um, happened to this old truck. And I, I've seen you know some pretty interesting um, videos around old versus new. I think the four wheel drive action or four wheel drive twenty four seven they call themselves now twenty four seven four wheel drive whatever it is. Um, talking about old versus new and there is a truckload of maintenance in these old trucks and I think if I hadn't learnt to try and do some of this stuff it would have cost me three or four times the amount so I've also got really lucky with the guys at my local Bursons as well they actually treat me, treat me like a trade customer now um, so they give me terrific pricing and terrific advice as well but yeah I mentioned yep yeah, it's, she's been lifted, so I had to get the suspension replaced. It uh, there's a bad tie rod in there, you can probably see, but uh, the other end's obviously a lot better because that's actually been rebuilt. But the uh, I end up just with Dobinson's and she's four wheel leaf suspension on this truck as well with a two inch lift. It actually came up close to three, uh, it did have 31s. And I've just moved it, sorry, 31s on a 15 inch rim. I do have the original rim still, but I've moved to 33s on 16 inch. Um, I did end up actually uh, rubber, what's it called? I'll think of the name and I'll actually post it on the video. 
but um, painting the rubber stuff <laughs> in under the wheel arch um, to one sound deaden it and two just offer a bit of protection. The other little bit and thing that took me friggin' ages and you probably really can't tell but I'll find a section that um, actually I'll get under under the truck when I get home but I'll take some photos and just put them in the video but I use a product called Penetrol. So Penetrol is a they mix it in marine paint. They do all sorts of stuff with it. It's like a miracle, um, a miracle. Uh, what would you call it? A miracle product, I suppose. It uh, actually stops rust dead in its tracks. Now this truck, this truck really doesn't have any rust. Lived its entire life uh, in country Victoria for the most part. Um, it was well obviously well maintained you can see it like really all, all i do is wash it um but uh it just i'll put a photo up it's probably easiest to explain and then obviously a little bit in the back here um we already had the fridge so the fridge is five years old now so obviously the arb fridges look a little bit different um had the table uh, that's a 200 watt solar blanket they're awesome uh, if you haven't got one of those, get into those. Um, the plan is with the, I'll, actually I'll talk about the rooftop camper later, but uh, I'll have permanent solar, but that extra solar blanket that there will be then, uh, it's just a wonderful bit of kit. Obviously Titan drawers, you know, for the price, like unreal, really. If uh, a couple hundred bucks, and I just bought single drawers, um, they're brilliant, really. Like, I made some custom boxes to go in the back. This lifts out, plates and uh, cutlery under there. This box lifts out. I use that more like a pantry, like long term pantry, so you know, your potatoes and stuff. Yeah, I lost some room using, I just had this ply at home. I had the ply left over from making the top and the box. Um, but super easy. Uh, just yeah, marking around really. Uh, I did get a little bit contacted. So under here is a 18 mil ply. And the reason I went 18 mil ply, I wanted to really lock it down. So um, I didn't want to put any new holes in the truck. So under these drawers were where the rear, the very rear row of seats were. Um, I just wanted to reuse some of the bolt holes and they're pretty obviously they're bolting down seats so they're pretty serious bolts so i used those to actually attach the drawers uh, and then obviously i've built off the top of the drawer so custom made the wings uh, off the top here as well there is a wing kit you can buy for these drawers uh, i don't know if they made one for a hj61 with the rear air conditioning uh, box compressor stuck in the way uh, I highly doubt it, so I just, uh, I, and I wanted a single solid top to mount, to start mounting everything off. So the idea is, um, there's a couple of, there's these flat fold chairs you can get from Drifter. They'll be um, one of my next little things. They'll actually mount down this side. I've got some solar screens coming, and when they're, when they're fitted, I'll show you what they are and why I bought them. These are just super, uh, I actually nearly use my slang term for super cheap. Um, I probably wouldn't really shop at super cheap if I was. I mean, they're great for convenience, but their pricing isn't great. And I mean, they serve, they, yeah, I mean, they're okay. It is okay, but um, knowing what I know now, and I might actually talk about a couple of my good retails in a minute, but uh, obviously none of these are paid advertisements, but I definitely wouldn't really recommend super cheap. But anyway. Uh, obviously there's work, a laptop, but this table, I just, you know, the really cool thing about this is like, I couldn't tell you how many times I've screwed something down and taken it off. So I did have the fridge a little bit further over this way, but obviously I need to fit the chairs down there. I'm actually going to make a box that goes around the chairs so it holds the chairs in there. And then I'll find a way to secure them in there so they can't actually slide out. Um, I ended up with an angle fridge slide. I was looking at the drop down fridge slides and uh, the only problem with a drop down fridge slide is you can't actually open, obviously when the fridge is down, you can't open your drawer. And the other thing about it is I really didn't want to have it so that I, uh, uh, it dropped down under the 
carpet seat. Uh, and it might, that might sound a little bit weird, but you know, I don't really want to wear the carpet out. So I'm actually not really sure what I'm going to do with the carpet. If I'm that conscious about wearing it out, um, I, get a bit, I even get a bit funny about it when I put my beer down. You know, I feel like I want to use a coaster. But uh, um, I've just got a, a thumper max mounted in the back there. Um, I'll just play around with that. As I said to a buddy of mine, it's a bit like the solar blanket. It's too cheap not to. Um, okay, you really do need to... Uh, at those sort of prices, yeah, it's 900 bucks for an RV, it's 100 bucks for whatever it is. Well, I won't quote pricing from the Four Drive Super Centre because I tip everything's that cheap, but I, maybe it's more. Um, I've, I, I've repacked these drawers so many times. Um, yeah, I started off with, like, I had every type of tool you could think of under the sun in there, and pretty much all my tools, like most of my hand tools. And then I just realised that I was like, I had like 11 screwdrivers. Like, what are you going to do with 11 screwdrivers? Like, yeah, you know, at the most, you might need two number twos, you know what I mean? Like, and a number three. But anyway, so I've reconfigured a lot of that. Um, and you can probably tell I've still got change now. But I've managed to squeeze a whole bunch of stuff, uh, including wiring. And there's a fair bit of wiring going through this truck now as well, just a ground sheet. Um, but managed to tuck most of the wiring in out of the way. I do have it so it just runs on a 240 plug as well. Now this truck, so obviously I, I didn't want it to be a real painful process to connect batteries and charges and blah, blah, blah. So it literally plugs into two 240 plugs that I've actually currently got sitting on the dodgiest looking double adapter um, you've ever seen. But it works. I just chuck it in through the back window. Love these sliding windows. I, excuse me. Why did they bother taking them off trucks, off cars? I, bring them back. Toyota, bring back these windows. All ones that lift out. One or the other. Um, yeah, so you can hide plenty of stuff in and around. Um, there's these little aerials you can buy that sit on the back of the front side. And I looked at them, you know, and I just thought, no, I'm just going to... So I got a, a hook, one of these things. It's off the the actual... Um, it comes with the fridge slide. Obviously, it's an angle fridge slide. It's designed for angle fridges. So if you're permanently mounting your angle fridge, you'd use this bracket with a with uh, some hook and eye turnbuckles. Um, but anyway, I just used, cable tied them there, put another one up the top there, in, inside the actual fridge box and happy days so yeah I got I did get a little bit excited when it comes to actually making uh, using contact adhesive one it smells pretty bad but bad in an awesome way and two uh, it's insanely easy to use so with a circular saw and a, and a track you know like whether when I say a track like a spirit level or something to actually clamp to the material you're cutting you can cut incredibly straight so um yeah that's what i mean like you can fit as long as it's flat you can fit each of the stuff under these suits and then you get all this stuff in under the everyone else's seat so they're my hand well, when i say my hand tools there's a, a drill impact driver and a grinder and some batteries in under that one um obviously with a footy in the truck you are uh, Need to have a pair of runners, so I've got some runners in under this one. What else have we got in under there? What's a junk though, looks of it. Yes, we've got a first aid kit oh, and some rags and a couple of pairs of gloves. So, yeah, that's the old cruiser, that's where she's at at the moment. Um, probably a couple of big things happening over the next couple of weeks. Uh, one will be the exhaust, um, there'll be a turbo back three inch, so that'll be pretty cool. Uh, a little bit more on the uh, drivetrain as well. So I've just got some unis to do. This front, you can probably see there, this front drive shaft, something it's got a really bad rattle. So we'll pull it apart. There's a couple of great YouTube videos. And they're actually, all of them are on 80 series, but um, a couple of great YouTube videos on those. And then outside of that, it's just the diff centers. And to be perfectly honest, uh, 
uh, the minute the diffs get opened, I reckon it's time to probably fit either an e-locker or something along those lines. So there's a thing called an ox locker, which is a mechanical locker. Uh, so those that know anything about locks, diff lockers, I don't. I'm just looking from what I've seen. Uh, these ox lockers are pretty awesome, but they don't actually work in this type of um, diff. So it'll probably be an e-locker. I, I do like the ARB diff locks, um, but I, I just don't like the compressed air thing. I just don't get it. Like, why? I'm sure they're very reliable, um, but why? <laughs> anyway, but uh, yeah, so that when that happens, that'll happen. But yeah, I suppose the grand plan, the grand plan for the old truck is just to uh, take a places. You know, like Nan and Pa, they used to tow their, their ever new caravan around. I'll see if I can dig some photos out. Um, but yeah, just to go some places. And I think take a places that Manny and Pa didn't go. So they would have stuck to the blacktop. Um, I've got a good buddy of mine, Will. If you probably watch this too, Will, but uh, be great to go and meet Will in the middle of Australia for a beer. He lives over in Perth. Um, yeah, just some, do some cool things in it. So I'd love to drive to the Kimberley from here, Southeast Queensland. Uh, I'd love to find some places and space and things probably where most of anyone that's actually watching this would never want to go <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah so a little bit of time a little bit of money keep watching come along for the journey uh, I still use it in between um, I think my next little camping mission is uh, my birthday weekend after next uh, so I don't even know when I'll post this but Maybe I might even post it after my birthday, but the uh, and I'll take some video and it's just one of those learning practices, right? So, you know, I think uh, every time I've gone camping, I've come back and then spent a couple of hours tweaking something or changing something or moving something. Um, yeah, good fun, <laughs> good fun. So, that's the old truck. Thanks for watching and uh. Stay tuned.